Howdy, AP Gal, it's Miss Kosh, and we are going to look at um, sections 2.1 and 2.2 two, two, um, from the AP curriculum, and we're looking at arithmetic and geometric sequences. So I may break this into a few videos, but here we go, let's get started. Um, so as we begin, I have a few different sequences here, and we're going to find, um, I want you to find the next two terms, then we want to talk about finding the nth term, and then use that to find the hundredth term. Okay, so on this one, what I notice, well, actually, you could pause the video and try, try for yourself before, you, uh, before I continue. Um, okay, so anyway, if you did, great. If not, here we go. Notice on this, I'm adding three, I'm adding three, I'm adding three, I'm adding three. Um, and when I notice that I'm adding three each time, what's happening here is um, my nth term would be three in, because I had a, a slope or an average rate of change of three. Um, and then when I plug in 1, because this is my first term, I want to get 14. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 11 would give me 14. Okay, and so let's see. This would be my 1, 2, 3, my fourth term. When I plug in 4, I get 12 plus 11 is 20, 23, which is what I wanted. Um, and then I want to find the hundredth term. So this term, right, this blank right there is for the hundredth term. So 311. There we go. Okay, the next one, uh, 57 to 50, I'm subtracting 7, subtracting 7, subtracting 7, subtract 7, subtract 7. When I subtract 7, that tells me I'm going to do something like that, but I need to figure out, well, what would I, when I plug in 1, I want to get 57. So I could think here, if I plug in negative 7 times 1 plus some, uh, some value, well, it's kind of our b value, since this appears to be linear, is equal to 57. Um, add, add 7 to the other side, that gives me 64. So plus 64. Okay, so now to find my hundredth term, I plug in 100 into that, I get negative 700 plus 64. Um, that's 36, so a negative 636. Um, we have been PSAT testing, sort of, today, and... Um, Let's just make sure I remember how to math. Um, times 100 plus 64. Oh, good. Okay. Um, <laughs> one gets tired. I did. I added 14. I added 14. I added 14. Let's add 14. Let's add 14. So 14 in and then minus, let's see, 14 more than, uh, sorry. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, minus 32. Let's see. If I have, um, oh, negative, nope. Okay, 14 times 1 minus 32. Yes, oh good. Oh my goodness, maybe I should <laughs> save my video for another day. So now let's plug in 14 times 100 minus 32, and that gives us our 100th term is 1368. All right, so all of these sequences that had a common difference here um, are all arithmetic, and they can also be points on a line, okay? Now, a sequence, this would be, we use the notation something like a sub 1 is equal to 14, and then a sub 2 is equal to 17, and in this particular scenario here, we'd have a sub n, the nth term, was 3n plus 11. Okay, if we want to talk about this term here, it was a sub 100 is equal to 311. So that's how we would use those notations. Um, you would not have any values. Um, it's not exactly a line because we would have the first term, we would have the second term, and we wouldn't have anything between them. Okay, so it's, it would be... Um, if you did this... No, never mind. It would be a bunch of points. It would be points that formed a, that were um, on the same line, but they're not a continuous line because they're not connected. Okay, the next little bit that we're looking at, we have different ways to describe our arithmetic sequences. Um, and this one is a recursive formula. Recursive. I can't spell today. Who am I kidding? I can't spell any day. Um, and that's an explicit formula, so this one's also recursive. This one's explicit. Now, with the recursive formula, it always tells us where to start, and then it tells us what to do. Okay, so in this one, it's telling us that your first, our first term is six, and then we're telling us, well, okay, well, let's also think about this for just a second. If I have, if I have term one, 
followed by term two, it's followed by term three. Somewhere out here is term n, okay? And the term that came right before the nth term, dot, 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 is the a sub n minus one, the n minus one term. I think that's kind of fun to say. And then the term that comes right after the nth term is a sub n plus one. Um, and I also will, say, um, will tell my kids, I'm not grading your handwriting, but I'm grading your handwriting. There's a big difference between the term that came before the nth term and something that's one less than the nth term. a sub n minus one is usually not equal to a sub n minus one. Okay, so I care, well, we care, math cares about how you write this out. This is a little subscript here. This is not, um, and they're very different. This is saying, take the term before the nth term. This is saying, take the nth term and then subtract one from it. Totally different things. Um, if they're equal, you just got lucky, okay? Um, so what's happening here on this one is they're saying for the nth term, go to the n minus one term and add two. So for the third term, well, let's, okay, we know the first term. For the second term, we come to the term right before it, the first term, and add two. Well, the first term was six, so now we add two, and we're at eight. To get to the third term, we go to the second term and add two. Well, eight plus two is 10. To get to the fourth term, we go to the third term and add, add two, um, and there is that, that equation. If I am on my calculator, oh, exit, delete all. Okay, if I'm on my calculator, we can generate a recursive sequence pretty nicely. We tell it, if we, we say where we wanna start, six, hit enter, and then we can just do plus two, and I can just keep hitting enter. Now, the only problem with this sort of method is that you have to count <laughs> and know which one you're on, but I do find it fun to just be ridiculous and keep going. Um, okay, the explicit formula, you know what, let me switch colors. The explicit formula here is just written where you could say, okay, well, what is, what is b sub one? Well, b sub one would be equal to negative seven times one plus two. Negative seven plus two is negative five, so the first term of this is negative five. Then we could say, okay, well, what's b sub two? Well, negative seven times two plus two, that's negative 14 plus two is negative 12. Notice, what did I do to go from here to here? I subtracted 12. Um, I lied, I subtracted seven. Okay, I could also look and say, okay, what's b sub three? Well, that's a negative seven times three, negative 21 plus two is equal to a negative 19. Subtract seven, subtract seven, subtract seven again, and we're here. <coughs> Okay, um, if I wanna use my calculator to help me find one of those, what I might do is come down to the table and type in, it was negative seven, and we're gonna use X because that's what our options are, something like this, and I can go set up my table. I wanna start at one, end at, well, actually, I only wanted four, um, and I wanna step between them of one, so then I can come look here at my table, and there are those values. So that is a great way when using the explicit formula. Okay, um, the next one we are back to a recursive formula. They tell me where to start, negative 11. They tell me what to do, subtract five. So we're gonna subtract five, subtract five, subtract five. And there we go. Um, on this last one, let's use the table feature again. Um, we'll come back here, exit. This is now 31 plus 26 X. We're in, okay, table. And so the first five term, four terms that we care about, 57, 83, 109, and 135. Okay. Um, so the next one here, this gets a little bit more interesting. And you know what? I will save that one for the next video. So come on back.